I don't know, you always have that conversation in the back of your mind of being like, ah, I should do more, right? But in, in reality, it's just so individually kind of based. And, and when you look at your life through the shoulds of what other people are doing, you'll just end up being unhappy. What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's going on, E? My brother, so good to see you. Um, I am still very far away from you, but I'm also very excited to just reconnect. Again, we, we kind of had a couple of weeks that we were off, but I am so grateful to be back. Um, if you are one of my friends on Instagram, you kind of see me going all around. Um, I have some more short kind of tales to tell about going through two more Airbnbs. Um, I still haven't been able to find a can opener in any of my Airbnbs that have been in in the past uh, two weeks. So please, short term rental nation, please put can openers in your Airbnbs. Also, because it's very dangerous for your guests, because then they'll be like me trying to open them with. Uh, chef's knives and all type of things, um, which <laughs> it's quite dangerous. Uh, so yeah, please buy can openers. Um, they're not that expensive. I don't know why they don't like them in Spain. I guess there must be some, some cultural thing or they yeah, just man, don't open cans. I, 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 in Spain. We don't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I just need to open my, my coconut milk. But um, anyways, life is good. Um, I just wanted to say, Mike, congrats. The new the new hotel is up and running and, and with a full house. Yeah, it was, uh, we're pretty excited. I mean, we opened, this will air on whatever it is, Monday the 5th. Um, mm -hmm. We had opened on the 24th, had a full house the first full weekend. Um, got it live on Airbnb, booking.com. I'm working on some final touches for the website right now with our buddy, Mark Simpson. Then we'll get our direct booking site up and um, let the floodgates open. So it's uh, it's been good. I'm excited for the listeners. You guys know this has been a long process. We've been working on this since late March, and today is July 1st. So it's been uh, it's been a long run, but we're <laughs> glad to be live. So it's uh, awesome. it's good, man. It's good. So we're recording this on July 1st. Uh, I know you're not stateside, but are you doing anything for the fourth? Like any plans? Or just hanging yeah just continuing just hanging. my my vacation yeah yeah i had to give my uh my virtual assistant the day off on the fifth um so i'm already dreading now now the parts that i dread the most is like my saturday and sunday because my phone actually rings and and i have to remind myself that actually i have to answer it if not nobody's gonna answer it um so just the thought that i have to answer it also saturday through monday um it's gonna be the most i've answered my phone in the past in the past month um but it's all good right absolutely it just just means i have to grow a little bit more to um find somebody that actually covers the weekend as well which is kind of the next goal in the next three to six months yeah we've been looking and speaking of the devil mark simpson just texted me so i don't know if he's listening or what but he literally just texted me <laughs> so um our potential next move is we use a call center for our overnight stuff and it's okay, but it's pretty limited to what they can do. So we're, my team is suggesting that we go out, we hire a couple more uh, VAs to cover the overnight shift. Cause there's some, some admin back office stuff that they could do. And then they could answer the phones. They could take bookings. They could get guests into their rooms if they have lockout issues, whatever it is. And then it just cuts down. Cause if there ever is an emergency, that answering service literally just starts going down the phone book of like everybody on my team. And then eventually it gets to me if nobody picks up and I don't like getting those calls. It's very, very few and far between, but they get them. So they're like, can we please have somebody on staff that just 
does the overnight. So we're looking at that now, but I'm excited for today's episode, man. Today we have uh, a fellow GoBro, GoBundance member with us, Mr. Justin Skinner. Uh, Justin grew up in Springfield, Missouri, and he played collegiate baseball. Definitely looks like an athlete, like he's staying in shape, which we love. And uh, he's owned a commercial photography and graphic design business with his wife. Uh, and when we got invoices and then with his wife and we got introduced to short-term rentals, they've been hosting for about five years now. And they're in the process of building a lake house uh, on Table Rock Lake. So that is exciting. So without further ado, Mr. Skinner, welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Steve, for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to have you on. So why don't you kind of walk us through your background and how you got into this whole short-term rental industry? Yeah, kind of a weird route. Um, we wound up, so so like you said, we wound up doing um, design and, and photography straight out of um, uh, college. So we both got basically worthless degrees. Um, I played college baseball. I got a design degree. My wife got a studio art degree. And I think we had like two of the top three worst degrees you could ever have coming out of college, but we made it work. Um, so I want to work in uh, at a, a marketing company, worked at a publishing company for a couple of years and then actually got fired. And then that's when we decided we just, we didn't want to work for anyone ever again. So we opened up our own studio um, and then we were in a space uh, in downtown Springfield for about two, three years, something like that. And then the building owner came to us and said, Hey, I'm going to sell. So we, we basically came to the agreement that we didn't want to leave. Um, so it was either, you know, buy the building or get kicked out. So we decided to buy the building. Um, a couple months into that, we had a tenant who was kind of unruly. We had to evict him, unfortunately, but then we decided to give Airbnb a shot and that kind of kicked off our short-term rental process. And we loved hosting we loved meeting people. Um, we actually lived in the building upstairs and worked downstairs. So uh, we got to know a lot of our guests and we got to host all of them, kind of show them the street. Um, we live on kind of like a small boutique street in Springfield. Uh, that's where our first commercial building is. So we kind of just fell in love with Airbnb. Um, wound up turning another one. We bought a house and kind of just kept stacking them and, uh, by the end of the year, this year, we should be should be up towards nine or ten. Um, so that's kind of been a, a full time job. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Can you, can you walk us back through that first deal? So, owner of the building's like, listen, I'm out or I'm selling. You got to go. You had the thought, I'm going to buy this thing. How did how did yeah. that go for somebody that was doing a lot of design and photography work to thinking about how can I make this work to buy a commercial building? What was your thought process around that? Yeah, sometimes I'm kind of more gung ho. And if if something like works out in my head, I'm just like, let's go for it. We'll work out the details later. My wife's more reserved and I was like, eh, is this really a smart idea? We kind of we have a good thing going. Why why mess it up? So um she was actually uh at peace about it and she loved the idea. So he came to us. He, it wasn't put on the market or anything. He just said, Hey, um, you know, we're going to sell this. And we knew actually the guy next door who owned the building next door wanted it. And he was kind of a little upset actually that he didn't have a chance to buy it. And we just, we put an offer The basically the owner said, here's my number. And we didn't negotiate. We said, fine, that works. And then all the lofts were rented out. So really the mortgage was, was paid for from day one. So the risk wasn't super high. Um, but we decided to go for it. And, um, I mean, the plan was just to keep not do Airbnb. We, we didn't actually, that wasn't even our radar in the beginning. It was just to keep the traditional rentals going and, um, just stay in our space down below. How many units are in that building? There's four, there's one commercial space on the bottom. Um, and then there's two lofts and then one on the top floor. So there's three floors, about 2,200 square feet, each floor. Nice. So it's just a larger house hack really initially. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we actually wound up, uh, we weren't living in the building at the time and we lived, I don't know, 10 minutes from the building. And then we wound up selling our house. Uh, and then one of our tenants moved in on our, I guess we have a penthouse suite is what we call it, uh, on the top floor and he wanted moving in and kind of fixed up some things and just ran with it. So we did, yeah, we house hacked on a commercial building. Nice. I love it. I love, I it. love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love just I feel people all the time say that like, oh, like there's no opportunities and there is none of this, none of that. And the reality is like a lot of the times they're always around you and it's just a matter of like, oops, I was trying to time it guys, I'm sorry. There's a, a <laughs> church in front of me and I was muted for the past two minutes hoping that I was gonna time this, this church bell. 
uh, but they're obviously one minute late. Um, I like so anyways, it. Right? It adds it's to the ambiance. It does. It does. It's, yeah. it's also super great later at night where you're trying to sleep and this thing is still going off. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, so yeah, like a lot of the times it's just like kind of taking the chance, right? So why, how did the Airbnb thing happen? Like mm -hmm. you said, that wasn't in your mind even, right? So somebody yeah. brought it up. Did you go somewhere and you actually rented an Airbnb or how did that happen? Yeah, so it was early on. Springfield really didn't have that many Airbnbs. Um, and we actually knew, we had stayed at a couple. Um, and I think we stayed at one in Kansas City. And to be quite honest, it was a horrible experience. It was awful. Um, and we came back and I think that was the first one. And then the, our neighbor across the street had done one and he, he had been having a lot of success. And they kind of sat down with us and said, hey, you know, you can do this. Here's kind of what we've learned. Um, and so we kind of just listened to them. Um, started out and then my wife's, you know, good at the interior and, and seeing things I can't see. So I just got out of the way with that and then moved furniture for the most part. Um, and then we kind of rolled with it. And the first month, um, I think our rent, our traditional rent was like six twenty five a month. And the first month we did it, I think we brought in $1,400. And at that point we were like, yeah, we may be onto something. Um, uh, we kind of, we just, we kept going. Mm. Yeah. That's that. That's always that aha moment, right? When you go from the six twenty-five to the like fourteen hundred, yeah. twice the rent, right? Exactly. Um, so, you guys finance that building through traditional financing, and you got owner owner carry or or yeah, you guys got that first one. Yeah, we actually got turned down by the first bank we went to, which we didn't understand why, but it's because we didn't have a ton of money. Um, but we got turned down. I think the second bank we went to, uh, was actually a college friend. Um, and he worked with us and, uh, essentially came up with like a creative deal for us to get it done. Um, so honestly, a lot of that goes back to relationships, which, you know, I'm sure you guys have talked about and what everyone talks about really is relationships. Um, but yeah, we really, we didn't have a ton of money. Um, we had just enough to put down, you know, like 15% on the building, um, and then we actually took out a 5% loan on our photography equipment um, and then paid that off for the next couple of years. Nice. Yeah. So you've got that, you've got that first building, you get this four unit. Did you convert any of the other units to Airbnb or did you go out and get another deal first? Like what was Yeah, we actually did. We tried. So the second loft came available, we furnished it um, and then we had some success. We were trying like 180 a night, uh, which was early in, in Springfield. And I don't think we were, we were just getting weekends booked and it really wasn't working out like we thought it would. So we actually had, um, someone who was working with us that wanted to rent it him and he just got married. And so we actually wound up renting to them for a while. Um, and then once they moved out, we decided to go ahead and try it again. And ever since then, um, we, we adjusted the price. We're like 115 a night, um, which is probably average for this area. Um, and it's worked out really well ever since it's, it's probably one of our better performing Airbnbs actually. Nice. So are you doing the pricing manually now, or do you have a dynamic pricing tool that you're using? Yeah. So my wife and I agree that we just do, we just set the price. So we do have some weekend pricing, but the smart pricing, we just kind of, when we're booking Airbnbs, we just got annoyed with it because, you know, it'd show like from $89 and you get in and on the weekend or, you know, it'd be like 230 or some, you know, some ridiculous where it was just different. So we just decided we wanted just the, the rate to be the same. So when people went to book it, um, they weren't getting a big surprise and, you know, I would say we probably left some money on the table for the most part, but also for the most part, we've had pretty, pretty happy guests and pretty been pretty lucky in that, that department. Mm. Um, do you guys go and meet your tenant now? Like when they come, like your, your actual guests, is that still a thing that you do or, or did you guys kind of move away from that now that you have nine, 10 units? Yeah, we actually never, we, we put lock boxes in from the beginning. So we had hard key lock boxes and then, um, so, but with us working downstairs and living upstairs, we just run into them all the time. Um, and if they ever had an issue, we'd come down and help them. But honestly, from day one, we had gotten some advice and read some Airbnb articles online that, you know, do the lock box because we still traveled some. And, uh, if we weren't available, we didn't want to have to meet someone over there at 1 AM to give them a key. So, uh, from the beginning, we did that. And then we've done since then, we've got, you know, August locks, we've got some other electric locks, electronic locks, but I would say, honestly, we maybe meet, um, 
three, four percent of our guests now. It's you know obviously we have conversations with them over the app and um, through the phone, but for the most part we don't meet them. Yeah, that's been very interesting for me here, right? Because I. I'm very much like you, right? Like I, and I'm just like Mike, right? We have the team. We send the right instructions. The keys are there. You just go in yourself. You, you, you do what you do. Um, out of the four Airbnbs I've been in here in Spain, I've had two hosts that actually came to meet me and then two hosts that were just lockbox, just let yourself in. Um, and what I've realized is that every time the host came to meet me was a very particular kind of host. Mm -hmm. And they were particularly proud about their space and they were particularly proud about their area. Um, and I would define them demographic wise is like if my mom did Airbnb, right? <laughs> is that is that lady that does it with the love and she loves her space and she loves in, in this particular case, she loves the island and she just wants to share it with you. And the very first time that this happened was just super sweet German lady and I got and I told this on the last podcast I got kind of annoyed because I was just like after a little bit she was overextending she was talking and talking and then I was like okay you're you're kind of being rude like mentally rude I'm like just let her do her thing and then by the second time I realized it's just part of the culture of like coming to meet people and 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 greet people um but it just if you're trying to do this as a business, it's just not a sustainable yeah. kind of thing, right? Because also, like, she's like, well, I'll be here between four and five. So you have to <laughs> arrive yeah. here between four and five. And you're like, well, I need to eat lunch. Like, <laughs> yep. it's going to happen, right? Exactly. Um, so how big is your team? Like, it's just you and your wife still? Or or how does that? Work? Yeah, so it's just my wife and I. And, and I'll, I'll get to that question, too. I was going to um, kind of talk about what you're talking about. But as far as the um, the hosting and talking with people, I know we kind of got to the point where we were more like amoeba, uh, amoeba hosts, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, if someone wanted to talk, we talk. And there were some guests that you could tell, like, would not want to make eye contact or they just want to go to their room and not talk to anyone. Um, and I think we did that traveling, too. It's like you find a host that wants to talk with you and you have to give subtle nonverbal cues that you're, you, you know, want to get in. Um, but there are, there's always those, you know, one host or one guest that literally would talk for hours. Um, but beyond that, um, on our team, yeah, it's just my wife and I, and then, uh, we obviously are to the point where we need help cleaning and flipping stuff. So my wife's, uh, trained four or five different people. Um, and then we use the turnover B and B app, um, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with, but it shoots out, um, to our cleaners. They, you know, grab things and it's, it's really hands off and, uh, our cleaners help out a ton. But as far as the administrative part, it's just my wife and I, and honestly, my wife runs the bulk of it. I love it. If you had to, to estimate, so you, I think you said you had six listings live now and you've got a I think few. So, yeah. yeah. So, on average, how many hours a week do you think between you and your wife it takes to run those with the systems that you have? I mean, honestly, um, as long as there's not any fires we have to put out, I would say um, maybe maybe an hour per unit. So maybe six hours a week, maybe. Um, and you're not really, even using a lot of the automated tech, it sounds like. No, and that's still, we're still like sending personal messages to people, checking in on them. Um, so yeah, I know there's tech we still could leverage at this point. We just like, I know my wife loves it too. And I think it makes a big difference, but you know, if someone says, hey, I'm in town for my mother's funeral or something like that, you know, my wife will go out and uh, grab them a gift card or she'll say, hey, I'm so sorry, you know, just personalizing it. And I think it makes a big difference. Um, so we're ch still trying to figure out what automization looks like within that personal realm. Yeah. No, I wanted to ask that because people ask me all the time. And when I tell them, you know, honestly, for me, it's a couple hours a week with a lot of units, they don't believe me. And I'm like, I'm telling you, like, it's, it's true. And even it's six units still given a lot of personal touch. It's six hours a week. Yeah. So like that's mind blowing for the amount of money that you can generate from this business. And I've, yeah. Still don't think people fully grasp that. No. And the funny thing is the flip side of that, I have investors now that are like, Hey, I want an Airbnb. And I'm like, you, you realize it's not passive, right? Like you're going to have to put some work into it. And like, well, how, how much time am I going to spend? I don't know, five hours a week. Well, I don't want to spend that. That's too much. So it's like on the flip side, some people who want completely passive, it's not completely passive, 
but it's also not going to drain your time like like some people think yeah and i yeah. think it's it's, oh, it's a rewarding it's a rewarding kind of kind of time also right and especially if it you is. have the right personality like it sounds like your wife has a very hospitable personality um and it's kind of very typical like i ended up I, I was actually uh, an exchange student out of Italy, and I got sent from Sardinia, Italy, which is an island, to Harrisonville, Missouri. So uh-huh. I lived in Harrisonville, Missouri for a year. Um, and the main thing that I remember, um, other than just the huge cornfields everywhere, was just how sweet people were and just mm-hmm. super hospitable and super nice. And like, if you have that type of personality, the couple messages here and there are not really going to bother you, but they'll make a big difference. Um, and I love what you said also about the smart, the smart messaging. They work great. And in my experience, they do save a lot of time, but I still train Joyce. And I, and when I'm, I'm checking them, I still read them because for example, we got one yesterday that the guy's like, my family's coming to town because my wife just gave birth to our first daughter. And our automated message is like, hey, thank you so much for your booking, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't say anything about the, the messaging, right? Yeah. So going back and checking and then just making a note of it. So like, yes, you can create a system that make it extra passive, but you still want to, the difference between getting a four-star and a five-star review, it's going to be that, right? It's the fact for that sure. you're actually paying attention and you're listening to what your guests are saying and you're acting on it because that's what makes an, an experience kind of memorable because if you just go off the automated messages and you just wash your hands of it you may be losing some opportunities to make this day a little bit more special for sure yeah that's well said yeah i agree with that and i think <clears throat> if i reflect back i think i got my first virtual assistant right around where you're at just i think i was at six units and that, that's when i was like all right I, I should add somebody even if it's just part-time now i've got a bunch of full-time people and it's definitely helped to personalize it because their sole focus is providing a great guest experience. Like I'm big on a lot of Mike McCallowitz's stuff. And he talks about um, the queen bee role in any business. Like every business has like one core function that has to be protected at all time. And I believe for our business, it's providing a great guest experience. So if you, mm-hmm. if you do that, well, the money will follow and everything else will follow. So to do that, you have to make sure that the cleaners are doing a good job. The handyman can do what they need to do. Your guest communication team, make sure that they're on top of things and communicates mm-hmm. well with the guest. Um, but since I've been able to add those people and they're solely focused on that, it's definitely been able to add those personal touches or to respond accordingly. We still use a ton of automation, but mm-hmm. when they're reviewing it, they can go in now and on top of that stuff, like put in those personal touches. For sure. Uh, it does go a long way. We, we actually had, um, we had a traveling nurse that stayed with us for a long time and she stayed actually in, um, one of our first units and she wound up coming back in town and we didn't have space for her. So she actually wound up staying at her house in like an extra bedroom, but it was just from like getting to know her, um, you know, helping her with personal touches and, you know, we trusted her, she trusted us. Uh, so they, in an odd way, they kind of can become like family members if, you know, they're coming back over and over again and you're treating them, you know, um, like a friend, it it does make a huge difference. For Mm. sure. When when you're looking, I know he loves the hospitality stuff. You could go deep down that. I'm, I'm curious for you on, on the investing side now, Mm -hmm. a couple things like who we talk a lot about, like who's who's your ideal guest avatar and like, who are you primarily attracting? Like you just mentioned the traveling nurses, but for you, what type of criteria are you looking in the properties that you're acquiring and what types of guests are you typically serving in your markets? Yeah. So typically in our area, we're serving business travelers. Um, I would say the bulk of our business is business travelers and traveling nurses. Um, And we're actually building out right now. So we're building out a triplex and we're just going to cater to like, two to three month traveling nurses with those two to three month contracts. Um, so we're just going to host 30 plus days through Airbnb and VRBO um, and go that route. But we, we do get the occasional like vacationer people are in town and stuff, but um, it, maybe it's, maybe it's 50, 50, 50, 50 business, 50, 50 um, just personal travel. So when you're outfitting those, that, that uh, three family, as an example, are there certain mm-hmm. things that you're, 
that you've learned that you're going to put in those units now to provide a better experience for those people? Yeah. 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 can definitely a can opener, <laughs> which is funny when you were saying that, I'm like, I think we have a can opener. I was thinking I the same thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's on my list, but I'm going to, yeah. that's that I can't wait to go back and I'm going to go through all of our units and I need everybody to like, all the units have to have a can opener measuring cups. I haven't been able to find a single measuring cup in any of these Airbnbs. So I'm like mm-hmm. having to find things to measure with measuring spoons. And they're all those things that like cost you no money. Yeah, but if you have somebody like myself that likes to actually like, I love going out to eat, but financially, I am not somewhere in my life that I can be gone for a month and eat out three meals a day for the whole month. Yeah. Right. So I still need, yeah, I still need to cook some. And literally, it's been an adventure trying to cook because there is just the basic stuff that you think we all have that cost absolutely no money and they're Mm -hmm. not there. And I'm like, I need to go back and tell the team and like, we have to check all the units because this is ridiculous. Like how, you know what I mean? Like, why is there not a can opener? You know? Yeah. The hard part is you get them in there and then you realize like two months later that someone's actually taken off with them or something. And then like we had someone take off with a garage door opener, like literally right now we have a standalone garage unit that I cannot get into because someone took off with a garage door opener. I have no idea who it was. So I'm trying, I don't know if I should bust out the window or like pry the door up, but it's literally, we're just, we've been locked out for like a month and I keep putting it off, but I should probably do something about that. Maybe a locksmith could get you in there. I don't know how they do with yeah. garages, but. Yeah, yeah, I definitely need help on that. So on the, I guess getting back to the investing side, like yeah. what, when you're analyzing properties and markets, are all of yours around Springfield, Missouri? Like where you're yeah. based out of? Yeah. So all of ours are in Springfield. And then the one we're building on the lake is in Branson, Missouri. Um, so that's really as far out as we've gone. And, you know, I would say if we're going to, um, I guess, manage them ourselves, we'll most likely stay in Springfield unless we start, you know, expanding our team um, yeah, or unless we, you know, find another host outside, like we'd love to buy in Colorado or Florida or something like that. Um, we just don't know that we could manage that or, feel fully capable of managing that right now. Um, but who knows what, what, what tomorrow brings, but for now, that's where we're at. We'll show you how to do it. Yeah, I exactly. Got, I've got some in Florida. I guess I okay, to. cool. Um, no, we'd we love, love to learn. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, damn it. I just lost my train of thought. Um, I was going to speak to for us. I know you'd ask about, you know, kind of what we're thinking from, you know, what to put in certain units. So mainly, I would say we go after couples and singles um, because uh, we love kids, uh, but kids are hard on units. So usually we're buying like two bedroom, one bath units, and we're furnishing one with a bed and then we're doing the other ones in office. So we are trying to get either couples or just, you know, single business travelers. And it seemed to work out really well for us. Um, I know the few times we have had kids in, um, it's fine, but you know, there's just little things like we had a kid one time, take a marker and like draw all over a tear. Um, so little things like that, they're just small annoyances, but, um, we've kind of settled in that, that couples and singles area. It's funny you say that I haven't had, I've only had like one or two bad experiences, knock on wood, but one of them, this family just let their kid do whatever apparently. And he took Sharpie all over our brand new wooden blinds in the unit. Yeah. I was like, dude, are you serious? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, what would make you think that that's okay to just draw on my blinds and let your kid draw on my blinds? Like, are you serious? It happens all the time. I like, let them, I've, I've, I've I've built a deck units. for it, but it's just annoying to deal no, with. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the comforters, you, I can't tell you the amount of times that I had like markers or like, little sparklers and then all the comforters it's all full of like little sparkle things and it's just like those might have been strippers i don't know if those yeah. are- <laughs> i don't know yeah i i mean they, they uh, maybe it is florida that's a whole, so that's, that's a whole yeah, that, that could be yeah that yeah. could be um but hopefully not there would be really young strippers which would be bad <laughs> um but so now that you guys are it sounds like you're growing pretty organically right um where what is your guys's like five-year vision like where do you see yourself kind of going next yeah uh it's a good question um i think 
overall, we're both uh, on the same page that we don't want to grow too fast. So we're all for growth. We just don't want to um, overload ourselves and then, um, you know, get in some sort of time crunch because really we're doing all this because of our time freedom and we want to still be able to travel and take, you know, a sabbatical once a year um, and take time off to do those things. So that's where I would say, as far as five-year growth, I don't have units in mind and I don't, you know, want to be like at 50 units. Um, I think we just want to, uh, kind of see what doors open and then walk through those and go from there. But we're just not, both of us have never really been in like a, a hyper growth mode. And even when we own the, um, our graphic design studio, we really didn't ever want employees. We just, we were fine with slow, steady growth. Um, and we just seen, you know, some people grow really fast and then fall back to earth and it just, it wasn't good. So, um, as far as units go, we don't have a goal. I would say, I honestly have more goals. Both of us have goals just to, just to read like book goals and like, um, you know, attaining wisdom goals, things like that. Cause that to me is, once you have that, then yeah, 50 units don't seem like 50 and then 500 don't seem like 500. So I think we kind of just go with, go with the flow, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. I love that. And I think, and I, I think that, that yeah, dude, that answer is amazing. Also because it's so important because I think we have people that are listening and like, I, I know I experienced this with, with my own stuff, right? Like I, I've had, I've had the villas for a very, very long time. And I've grown it very organically, very over time. And then I, I look at Mike and Mike has had enormous success over a very short period of time. Um, a good friend of ours, Medier, I, I spoke to him earlier and, and we had him on maybe like what, Mike, six, seven months ago? He was one of the first had, episodes, yeah. Yeah, right. And he had one property and is now just closed on his third property and he has huge goals, right? And you're just kind of, I don't know, you always have that conversation in the back of your mind of being like, ah, I should do more, right? But in, in reality, it's just so individually kind of based. And, and when you look at your life through the shoulds of what other people are doing, you'll just end up being unhappy yep. because you're, you're kind of setting the speed. And, and the best analogy that I have is like when you go running with somebody that runs at a different speed than you and you try to run then you're not enjoying your run because you're not running at your own speed and you'll run for less time because you are trying to keep up with somebody that was running at a different speed than you, maybe for shorter. And you could run for longer if you just kind of minded your own speed and did what you know how to do. And Definitely. you'll get to where you're supposed to go anyways. Um, and it's great that you and your wife are both on the same page. Yeah. It, yeah. It makes a big difference. And, and honestly, I, I feel like it, we just always come back to the freedom aspect and we just want the freedom to do things. And right now, I mean, we have, we're very content. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, we don't want to just be comfortable. So uh, with all that being said, it's like, um, I guess I don't know how to really say it, but we're content without being content. Maybe, maybe that's how I can put it, but, um, we both love where we're at, but we also love where we're going. So, yeah, I, I want to reiterate one, one thing, because I, we do a lot of coaching and, um, the first thing I ask people is like what their goal is. And a lot of people will tell me, oh, I want, I want 10 units. I want 50 units. I want, I want a hundred units. I want a property in every state. And I'm like, okay, cool. Why? But most people haven't gotten past that point of the why. And that's why I'm so glad that you were like, listen, man, we're at six units. We got a few more in the pipeline. Like this is a lifestyle business. Like, mm -hmm. right. So it's like, you can go as big as you want. You can do big hotel deals. You can do whatever you want, but like, what is the why behind it? Like I got yeah. started with this cause I had a sick kid and I had to leave him because I had a job and I ran out of vacation time. I was like, I will never be in that situation again. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've done that. So now it's like anything new that we add, it's, it's a choice, but it's like, do I want 500 units right now? Nope. I already told my team, like we just stabilize this hotel. I'm not taking any more properties this summer. I got two more Airbnbs that we launched. I'm like chilling mm -hmm. golfing Bro, three times a week with this. my son. He says this every time. I'm telling you, I'm done. Every, every time I'm he done. got, he got the cove and it's like, I'm not doing anything else after the cove. 
And then the other hotel came and it's like, I'm not doing anything else with the hotel. And then there's two other Airbnbs coming online. And that's the thing, right? Like you can always handle more, but if you're just focusing on more and not appreciating what, what comes and the speed by which it comes, mm-hmm. it's not going to be enjoyable. And then in my experience, at least me personally, anytime that I try to go for the explosive growth without allowing the natural expansion and contraction that comes with life, that's when I get hurt. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, push more, 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 more. And I'm not allowing for that natural flow of things that they're, they're going to come down a little bit before going back up and expanding to the full kind of capacity. Because as you're onboarding properties, no matter how good you are, there is the unforeseenable of, of life, right? Mm-hmm. Like Mike is probably one of the best executors that I know in life. And, and the hotel, the second hotel still took longer than expected not because mike doesn't know what he's doing it's just because life yeah right? the life. city took too long and the county took too long and then covid happened and the furniture like i'm still waiting on furniture for an apartment that we we've been done for a month and a half mm-hmm. right what, what when am i gonna go rob somebody's house to get the couch that i need from ikea no like we just you just gotta wait and just let it flow And that's where my wife, I think, is great. And she really helps me with this. You know, when we close on a property or we open a property, she's like, hey, let's celebrate. And in my like on the inside, I'm like, no, we shouldn't celebrate. Like this is expected. Like like this is just this is excellence. You you do this because this is what needs to be done. She's like, no, we need to celebrate. So she's taught me how to definitely celebrate like little wins along the way, because it really does make a big difference because you know, if you don't, you look up and a year has gone by and you've closed on several properties and you've made great progress, but you're like, man, I'm not like, if you're comparing yourself, you're like, man, I, I don't, I don't have 20 and it's like, why don't, why don't I have 30 at this point? And then you're just always down on yourself. So I, I think it's definitely important to celebrate those little wins along the way. I love it. Well, I want to, I want to be respectful of your time. And before we get into to the, uh, to the last question, I want to acknowledge you and thank you for coming on here and sharing. <clears throat> it's interesting that you said that you're, you're subtly, you said this, but you're on a quest for wisdom more so yeah. than financial gain. And I, mm-hmm. I want to echo that cause it's so good. Um, and so many people just chase the dollars instead of figuring out like, what is my purpose? What am I here for? Like, why am I doing what I'm doing and actually thinking about it to design the lifestyle that you want? So I want to acknowledge you for that. And thank you for sharing that. Um, Really appreciate it. And um, for the folks that want to, you know, get in touch with you or stay at some of your properties, where can they, where can they do that? Yeah. If they want to stay in touch, um, I'm, I'm on Instagram. I'm not too um, involved there, but it's just Justin C. Skinner Instagram. And then uh, all of our properties are listed on Airbnb. So if you look up Springfield, um, you know, we've got several. It's Weston Lofts are one of them. Um, and then we've got an Olive property, but they should be in the first couple of pages of rankings. And then uh, my wife and I, my w- wife's name is Kendra. So it's just hosted by Justin and Kendra. If they ever want to stay in Springfield or if they're just coming through and they want to, you know, check it out and uh, get a tour, just reach out via Instagram and um, we'd be happy to oblige. Awesome, man. I love that. Yeah, I'm going to follow you guys now. And and I really want to echo the, just just the heart, man, like just just a humble heart. And, and I knew um, being part of Go Abundance, we were going to share some parts of character. Um, mm-hmm. But my usual expectation from Go Abundance, it's more on like just the money driven and just the health driven and anything else and everything else. But I I just love just the humbleness and just the goodness that kind of comes through, through your personality and just through the way that you spoke about your guests and just how you guys open up your home to that. Uh Oh, did we lose him? I think we lost him. It was good though. It was, it was good. <laughs> he was coming <laughs> in hot. I, I just really loved it. I think e, if you want to cut out, I might have cried. I was tearing up, but you cut out, so I'm not going to now. Oh man, well, <laughs> we'll we'll save you the tears. I'm just kidding. No, I appreciate you guys having me, and um, yeah, like I said, it, it's been a blast talking with you, and uh, hopefully we'll meet uh, in person someday. Yeah, for sure. 
So the, the last question that we ask all of our guests is what is your number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Yeah, I'd say just being personable. Um, I mean, trying to be as personal as possible and just being kind because it's so, it's so easy. And there's been so many times where we've had, you know, a guest that's maybe rude or they're having a bad day and you can tell. And I think just kindness honestly goes a long way. Um, and you know, a rude response back just snowballs into just really bad things. So I would say, honestly, out of everything, just be kind, whether you're on the host side or, you know, the guest side, uh, if you can just be kind, it, it makes a massive, massive difference. I love that. I'm back. Um, unfortunately, I'm using my hotspot on my phone. And when my phone rings, it cuts me off. Um, no worries. But yeah, man, that was, that was such a... Must be oh. ringing again. <laughs> <laughs> so great. What happens when you're in Spain? Yep. Uh-oh. You back? Yeah, yeah. This, this phone calls keep coming in. You got to put it on popular. airplane mode. Yeah, I'm going to do that for the next thing. I just don't know if my if my hotspot works if I put it on airplane mode. No, just do it on do not disturb that little moon. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, that's smart. <laughs> anyway. Telling you, Mike, Mike is the smart one when it comes to this show. <laughs> Mike is the smart one. <laughs> My brother, such a pleasure. I look forward to meeting yeah. you in person in one of the GoBundance events. Um, yeah. Wish you and your wife all the success um, and really looking forward to what doors open for you guys and which doors you choose to walk through and, and, and the wisdom that you'll gain from them. Appreciate it. Yeah, if you guys ever need anything at all, feel free to reach out. Absolutely. Will do. Thanks so much, Justin. Take care. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Hey, STR Nation. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.